Annyeong haseyo. So hi everyone. My name is Tomonobu Ibe from Quest3. And based in Tokyo in Japan. And I came here early in this morning from Tokyo. And uh, I would like to thank all the people supporting this wonderful event, and the eDaily team, and especially Flip. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to present today. So the title of this presentation is Tokenization of Japanese Anime Production with a Financial Institution in Japan, which is a pretty rare one, right? And you might be wondering why we are talking about anime, Japanese anime at a security token conference. And traditionally, yes, security token and Japanese anime don't seem connected. However, I believe that discussing content like a Japanese anime in a financial session like this shows that we are entering a new era of finance. So let me start by introducing myself. So I studied agriculture, actually, in university. But after graduation, I joined Goldman Sachs, so United States Investment Banking. And uh, I spent a total 11 years at Goldman Sachs and four years in FX sales and uh, seven years in fixed income sales, basically in based in Tokyo. So it's been two years since I left Goman, but I see, still look at things from a traditional finance perspective. So when I started Questry two years ago, I never imagined like, you know, I would be talking about a new type of securities, like security tokens using blockchain technology at here. So why did I leave Goldman Sachs and started my business? The answer is this slide. So I like to making a you know, mixture of entertainment industry and finance industry. So in traditional finance like US Treasury bonds or foreign exchanges or maybe stocks like I deal in, in Goldman, the market was very huge and so much money moving around, around. but I, for me, that was not that interest, interesting. So i wondering, you know, can we create more exciting financial products? Then I, my answer I found was combining Japanese entertainment with finance, as shown on this slide. And I mentioned this right, we are trying to establish a new direct financing system to support the sustainable, sustainable dev development of the content industry in Japan. So this is the key factor of our, and our you know, key mission and the vision of Quest3. And I also saying securitize Japanese contents to enable investment and support from people around all over the world. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with the Japanese content industry, but in Japan, it's very hard and very difficult for the content and finance industries to work together, actually. So this slide mentions, so I wrote fragmentation and as a result, there's no established way for the finance industry to support the content industry in Japan, more than like 20 years. So, but which, you know, financial institution is a kind of a professional over financing, right? So which is common in other countries, in the, in, in, in the United States and Korea as well. So for example, in Korea, I think Korea is ahead in this area. So many, fun, many funds, content funds, is supporting the finance of the entertainment, right? But in Japan, that's still rare. 
The part of reason of that is the lack of transparency in how money is used makes it, and it, make, it makes hard to turn content into financial products. So there is no inflow of risk money from uh, investors and the financial field. And the content industry need to disclose more information and data to the investors. And as a result, the scale of Japanese content production has reached, reached a ceiling, and the scales of Japan's content production has re reached a ceiling as well. So I think we need more money is flowing, flowing into the Japanese content market. So to bring together these two industries, we started a two business. First one is a digital securities business. It's a security token business, which is the main part of it today. And the second one is we call the showrunner business, but this is a kind of a production business in Japan. So we had a partnership with Japanese anime production and music production and game production. So we, all, we are, you know, trying to the making content product business as well, and making, uh, trying to make an inflow of risk money to the content industry. And the content industry is disclosing more information data to the investment, investors. So, so digital security is just a tool. We need to partner with the right content creators in Japan to create a new system that attracts the investment from all over the world. So my question here is, so would you be interested in investing in Japanese animation? So let me share a bit about the Japanese anime industries first. So Japanese anime industry is definitely one of the few growth industries in Japan. So it's a fact, so you know, and it, it, it actually the, it's a very important for Japanese government. So as you can see in this graph, the anime industry has almost doubled in these 10 years. And it continues to grow. So I think the world is demanding more Japanese animation. And the, interestingly, the overseas sales is exceeding Japanese domestic sales recently. And maybe last year, overseas markets actually exceeded the domestic market. So I believe this trend will continue to grow. And as I mentioned earlier, the Japanese government has always supported animation, Japanese anime industry. And sometimes, which is, you know, which failed, but, you know, government support is still a positive factor for the industry. So, so what I want to say here is that we are very bullish and positive on the anime industry in Japan. And it is very attractive as an industry and as an investment. However, if you research the Japanese animation industry online, you will find not only good news. So for example, the article, that, for example, this article is quite critical. They are saying the dark side of the anime industry. And they say a new service shows Japan's animation workers are overworked, underpaid, and regularly face harassment. And maybe this is just how capitalism works. We're well, not only unique to Japan animation industry, but the reality is that creators 
and the production companies who are truly supporting the industry have less power. In fact, about 40% of Japanese anime production companies are in the red. So I've spoken with many people in the animation industry past for the you know two, past two years, and I found that the issues, like these articles, these articles are mentioning, are quite real and true. The reason of that kind of you know, crisis is partly because unique funding schemes in Japan. So I believe in Japan, so business runners and investors, investors are same entity. So that's why they have uh, much power than uh, creators. But in the United States and the Korean, or more global standard content business, there is uh, investors and the business runners and the creations. So the much more balanced power. So this Japanese unique model worked actually domestically as a company shared risks and played multiple roles. But it has created a structure that's not friendly to creators and productions compared to the global standards. So that's why we believe that content finance is the key to make change the industry. So to solve and to tackle these problems, so we have partnered with Mizuho Securities, one of the major Japanese securities companies, to launch initiatives like this. So we launched a Talent of Talents Fund with Mizuho Securities, which is, you know, uh, so we aim to bring investment into attractive anime projects and consider what we can do for the sustainable development of the anime industry. So I've been working with them for more than two years and our efforts have been covered by major media like Bloomberg and others. They are saying Mizuho Fund to invest in Japan's popular but cash needing anime. Cash needing is actually true. So, this trial, this initiative with Mizuho Securities, is the first major attempt at a content finance space by a financial institution in Japan in about 20 years. For the past 20 years, there has been little progress in this area. But previously, there was an institution called JDC, Japan Digital Content, starting 1998. That was supported by the government and major companies in Japan. However, it went bankrupt in 2009, before Lehman shook. This had a significant impact, slowing progress in content finance in Japan. Actually, I've spoken with former Japan digital content leaders, and our project with the of Securities is a chance to take on the challenges that these pioneers, JDC, faced 20 years ago.
And recently, especially in this year, as I expected, this field has been becoming more active with various examples emerging. For me, this is very great news. And now, the question is the which schemes and models will be sustainable. Those that will continue to be chosen by the finance industry and the content industry has become more important. So we aim to create financial products that are chosen by the professional investors, which sets as a part from crowdfunding. So, so today is STO Summit, so talk about the tokenization. So this is, you know, main topic today. I am here to argue that the content, you know, this kind of content, this kind of financial product, is exactly what should be tokenized, I believe. So here is a chart actually often used in the tokenization space by BCG. And they pre predict that almost $16 trillion worth of financial assets will be tokenized by 2030. And interest Interestingly, with nearly 30% classified as other tokenizable assets. This other tokenizable assets category includes the kind of anime and the content I've been discussing today. And using blockchain and the tokenization for assets that haven't traditionally been turned into financial products offers significant benefits and excitement. So the market for anime production in Japan is around $2.5 billion. And the latest data from t of last year shows that it reached a new record high. And it might continue to grow. And we believe we can replace about 20% of this market with our model because there is a strong demand from the production side. And one day, like in Korea, most content could be created through fund, fund investments. The issues faced by the anime industry, industry in Japan are also common in other content, content industry like as game industry and the music industry. So we announced uh, our initiative with Mizuho Securities after that some of game industries and music industries and other industries, industries are approaching us. So we, we are also receiving industry about a regional, regional fund using content and operating entertainment facilities, which are closer to project finance. So that's why we aim to tap into the project finance market environment content. And when discussing about a security token and a tokenization, I believe cross-border are crucial. If we are only tokenizing within Japan, in Japanese yen, there might not be much advantage to use blockchain. However, if we aim to create securities or security tokens that cross borders and currencies, blockchain offers significant advantages. It is designed for that purpose. So, Alongside our anime fund with Mizuho Securities, we have launched our own fund using security tokens to attract investors. 
called Quest 3 Global Anime Security Token Fund. In the future, we plan to accept not only Japanese yen, but also cryptocurrency and stable coins for payments and dividends and to, in order to expand our investors base globally. And yesterday, we announced our partnership with Avalanche. So you can read about it in English as well. And we are honored to work with a blockchain that has been chosen by the financial institutions globally and is setting an innovative example. And we have already discussed these initiatives with Japan's financial service agency and a plan to proceed step by step. So we are here, step one, but next step, distributor will be a licensed brokers, and next step, we are trying to list on security token exchanges. So now, let's return to this slide. To achieve our vision and mission, it's more important that people from all over the world can access the Japanese anime. It's much more important. That's why I highlighted here. We believe that entertainment and the contents are day one global. So we dream, I dream of a future that where these exciting securities tokens are listed on exchanges worldwide and traded by many people around the world. And regardless of their country or currency. So we, we believe this will progress along with the evolution of finance. This is irreversible. This is a side note, but I'm an actually amateur musician. I've traveled to Africa for five times, and this photo shows me playing keyboards at a school in Kibir Islam in Nairobi. And I know that content and entertainment easily cross borders and country borders and languages. So, let me ask the, this question again. Do you want to invest in Japanese anime? At this moment and right now, people can't invest in Japanese anime, especially Japanese hit anime directly. However, I am sure that with the evolution of finance and technology, especially in blockchain space, the time will come you know, when many people around the world can invest in content like Japanese anima animation. So we aim to make this happen in the not too distant future. And lastly, here's a very ex exclusive information here, but the anime fund of the means of securities will involve original works from Korea as well. So although many details are yet to be finalized, I hope that this initiative, starting with Japanese anime production, will serve as a bridge connecting anime fans from Korea, Japan, and all over the world. So please look forward to more updates. So that concludes my presentation today. So thank you for listening. Kamasamrida.